Hello everyone. The subtopics uh, of the fourth lecture of thermodynamics is thermal expansion coefficient and compressibility coefficient. So let's start with thermal expansion coefficient, which is denoted as alpha. So this is actually defined as the rate of change in volume with respect to temperature per unit volume. Okay, because uh, volume and temperature are directly proportional to each other, then del V by del P is a positive parameter. So del V by del T means the rate of increase in volume with respect to increasing temperature if the pressure is kept constant okay now this rate if takes place per unit volume that means if the whole thing is divided by the total volume v then per unit volume is obtained okay so alpha that means the thermal expansion coefficient is the rate of increase in volume of a substance with respect to its increasing temperature at constant pressure per unit volume and what should be the dimension of this here volume in the uh, denominator and volume also in the numerator so these two would cancel each other where one by temperature part would remain in the equation so temperature inverse is the dimension of alpha so the unit should be kelvin inverse now the definition of compressibility coefficient is actually the rate of decrease in volume since according to Boyle's law volume and pressure are inversely proportional so del V by del P must be a negative term so this is the decrease in volume with increase in pressure if the temperature is kept constant okay uh, per unit volume means it is multiplied by 1 by P or it is divided by oh, total volume so this is the uh, compressibility coefficient so let's see once again what is the definition of uh, compressibility coefficient B this is the rate of decrease in volume of a substance which re with respect to its increasing pressure at constant temperature per unit volume and what is the dimension of it here volume in the numerator is cancelled by volume term in the denominator where 1 by pressure is left in the equation so pressure inverse is the dimension okay pressure inverse means its unit should be pascal inverse okay so let's uh, discuss some questions here so we have to evaluate alpha and beta that means thermal expansion coefficient and compressibility coefficient for ideal gases let's start for uh, uh, evaluating the value of alpha uh, with the ideal gas equation for n mole ideal gas pv equal to nrt so v is taken to the left hand side and the all other parameters taken to the right hand side because volume has to be differentiated with respect to temperature in order to find out the value of alpha so volume is differentiated with respect to temperature at constant pressure then pressure becomes constant and temperature is the variable okay and hence the d del t by del t part resulting in one that means here n r and p are constant so del b by del t p in the left hand side results in n r by p in the right hand side now what is the value of alpha value of alpha is this part when is divided by total volume then it results the value of alpha so this total part is divided by volume that means it is multiplied with 1 by v now this is nr by p so nr by p into 1 by v means nr by pv now pv means for an ideal gas nrt so putting the value nrt in place of pv we get here nrt in the denominator in the numerator we have nr so nr in the numerator cancels out another nr in the denominator resulting in 1 by t so the alpha that is the thermal expansion coefficient of an ideal gas is always 1 by t okay now let's find out the value of beta in the same manner here uh, uh, v is taking the left hand side but temperature is now kept constant in this uh, proceeding pressure was kept constant but here in this operation temperature is kept constant and pressure becomes a variable so volume is differentiated with respect to pressure at constant temperature resulting in 1 by minus 1 by p square because 1 by p when differentiated with respect to p then it results in minus 1 by p square and nrt all are constant so the overall result in the right hand side is minus nrt by p square now in order to find out the value of beta we have to multiply this parameter by minus 1 by p so it is multiplied by minus 1 by p so if it is multiplied by minus 1 by v then then this negative term is cancelled and it becomes p square v in the denominator so multiplying with minus 1 by v minus nrt by p square becomes plus nrt by p square v now nrt 
for an ideal gas is nothing but PV. So putting PV instead of NRT, we get PV by P square V and here only 1 by P remains after cancellation of this PV by this PV in the denominator. Only 1 P is left. So the value of beta for an ideal gas is 1 by pressure. Now move on to the next question. The next question is calculate del T del P V for an ideal gas in terms of alpha and beta. Okay. In terms of alpha and beta, this value has to be calculated for an ideal gas. Now we know the cyclic rule or the Euler's theorem. What is it? The cyclic rule for XYZ that means for PVT is del P del VT del V del T P del T del P V is equal to minus 1. Now we have to find out the value of del T del P V. Here is del T del P V and here these two terms can be evaluated with respect to alpha and beta. How? Let us see. Alpha is nothing but del V by del T P into 1 by V. Now here two variables are volume and temperature. Here is volume and temperature where volume is in the numerator and temperature is in the denominator. Here also volume in the numerator, temperature denominator. So this part is left unchanged, is kept unchanged. So what is the value of this part del V del T P? The value of this part is nothing but alpha into V. Similarly, we have to find out the value of del P del V T. Now we know the definition of beta that means compressibility coefficient as minus del V by del P T into 1 by V. Now here the pressure is in the numerator, volume in the denominator, but here it is it is the reciprocal. Okay, so we have to just uh, take the reciprocal of it. If we take the reciprocal of it, then uh, uh, del V by del P T uh, produces the result minus uh, beta into V. So it's reciprocal del P by del V T would result in minus 1 by beta into V. So this is written here. Okay, the reciprocal of this term is del P by del VT, which is nothing but minus 1 by beta into V. Okay, so just put the value, okay, put this value in this equation, cyclic rule equation. Here, the values are inserted. Instead of del P del VT, we are writing here minus 1 by beta V, and instead of uh, del V del TP, we are writing here alpha V. So, this volume is cancelled by this volume, and this negative term is cancelled by this negative term where beta goes to the right hand side from the denominator it goes to the numerator on cross multiplication multiplication and uh, from the same operation alpha goes to the denominator so the value of del t by del p v is nothing but beta by alpha so this is the value of del t by del p t with respect to alpha and beta now to the third and last question of this lecture we have to find out the value of del alpha del pt plus del beta del tv or we have to show that this summation of these two terms are zero okay so what is the value of alpha the value of alpha or the mathematical expression of alpha is del v del tp 1 by v okay so we, let's differentiate alpha with respect to pressure at constant temperature so in order to do that we have to uh, we have to divide this into two parts. One is x, another is y. Like x is del V del T P and y is 1 by V. So what is the rule of differentiation of x, y? Is x into dy plus y into dx. Okay. So here this is constant, then differentiation of 1 by V. And next time 1 by V is constant, differentiation of del V del T P. So when del V del T P is taken to be constant, then 1 by V is differentiated. So this differentiation looks like this, del uh, del 1 by V by del P at constant temperature. And when this part, 1 by V is kept constant, then differentiation of this parameter looks like this. Here already it is differentiated with respect to temperature. Now next time we are differentiating it with respect to pressure. So the pressure term remains in the uh, left hand side, left part of the denominator so it is del 2 v by del p del t okay and minus 1 by v uh, differentiation of minus 1 by v is minus 1 by v square but since it is not differentiated with respect to volume but it is differentiated it is being differentiated with respect to pressure so del v del p still is uh, remaining in the equation so this gives the result minus 1 by v square del v del p t okay and this part is also there with it. It is del V by del T P. It is del V by del T P again. 
and the second part is uh, remaining unchanged here so it was 1 by v del 2 v del pt here it is here the same remaining unchanged 1 by v del 2 v by del pt okay now let's operate beta in the similar manner okay the mathematical expression of beta is what it is minus del v del pt into 1 by v so we have to keep this part constant differentiate 1 by v then keep 1 by v constant differentiating this part so first this uh, part is taken to be constant then differentiation of 1 by v and secondly 1 by v is constant differentiation of this part in the uh, first bracket okay so the result is here it would be minus 1 by v square del v del tp sorry del v del pt so this minus is cancelled with this minus so it becomes plus 1 by v square del v del pt and still with that there is another coefficient which is actually del v del pt so this is also written here del v del t p this del v del pt del t p is nothing but this del v del pt okay and negative sign is cancelled uh, from the result of uh, differentiation which is minus 1 by v square okay now here is minus 1 by v del 2 v by del t p this is remaining the same so this is here written just giving unchanged so this is the expression of del beta by del t p and we have already obtained the expression of del alpha by del p t now let us sum them up so summing up these two that means the left hand side of these two equations we get this part okay now what is the result of this part the result of this part is the summation of the right hand sides of these two equations so the first term of the right hand side is minus 1 by v square del b del t p into del b del t p plus 1 by v is the second part of the right hand side of, of this equation is 1 by v del 2 v by del p del t okay and here the first part is 1 by v square del v del p t into del v del t p and the second term is minus 1 by v del 2 v del t del p now find that this part and this part are same having opposite signs so these two would cancel each other but these two are not same thing okay so these two has been written here so taking 1 by v del 2 v del p del t here and taking minus 1 by v del 2 v del t del p here but the fact is known that dz is a perfect differential dv is a perfect differential because v is a state function so if it is a perfect differential then it would be path independent so whether it is del p del t or it is del t del p it gives the same result that means these two are also equal that means they would also cancel each other resulting in zero okay so with a zero we have to conclude today's lecture so that's all for today thank you have a nice day